Special thanks to composer Jesse Harris for uh, the beautiful music that was used for that piece. Right now we're going to be turning our, t our attention to plants that have a lot of structure and plants that serve as beautiful counterpoints to those structural plants. I'm joined by Eric Pedley from uh, Eastside Succulents, and it's great to have you back on the program, Eric. Thank great you to for be having here. us. And we also have with us uh, Lindsay Mayer from uh, the Tillery Street Plant Company. And when I think of those, your two nurseries, I think of conjoined twins. You're right there on the east side on Tillery Street. Yep. Both nurseries cheek to jowl in the same space and uh, really nice complement to one another. People are very hungry for uh, plants that provide structure and, and succulents to deliver, <coughs> right? Yes, definitely. There's tons of different shapes and colors you can work with, but mm -hmm. uh, today I guess we'll focus on things that are cold hardy for your yard. I always like to talk about agaves, but we brought mm -hmm. some different things today. Okay, well, we have a, a, a number of different uh, groups of plants. One includes ice plants, ghost plants, and others. Uh, these are very popular. Uh, uh, certainly when you see these in the nursery, they look like great container plants, but these can be grown in the ground, right? Yes. Uh, most Echeverias and Graptopetalums aren't going to be cold hardy, but we've brought a few. Uh, for example, we have the uh, Echeveria agavoides, Echeveria mm -hmm. ronionii, and then the different form of ron ronionii, mm -hmm. the topsy-turvy Echeveria glauca. And we have a, a plethora of ice plants and sedum that you can work with to add texture and color to your landscapes and maybe work with some things you haven't used before. Endless numbers of forms that you have at the nursery are, are it's almost bewildering when you go. It's a lot of fun to yeah, see all yeah. the different uh, uh, variations. It's addictive. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it is quite addictive. <laughs> we have a, a grouping of sedums. And you mentioned the topsy-turvy. I want to call this plant out just because it's, it's such a striking looking plant. Yeah. And actually one that you really like to use in the garden. Yeah, absolutely. You you can use it in full sun, and it, it will take the cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great grower, so you'll always have a lot of pups that you can give away. Okay. And it's a leaf proper, so you can you can always make a lot of more lot more plants. Right. And, and so um, it was interesting hearing you talk about the the growing conditions for this because I I would put this in the full blazing sun. Um, and granite sand and forget about it. But this this is one that you said this you needs could, a little protection. You could only do that if it's already been in a nursery for a long time in full mm -hmm. sun. Mm -hmm. Really, you would want to hide that behind something or have some shade, some kind of rest at some point in the day. Right. I wouldn't go blasting full sun in granite. You you could de you, you can burn those. Yeah. So so just to be aware that not all succulents means uh, you know full sun. That's, right. That was yes. kind of the point. Of that. Part the, shade, little rest. A little <laughs> rest is a good thing for all of us in the Texas climate. <laughs> this is a relatively new uh, plant for our area. The, I, I call it the pine cone of Puntia yes. or prickly pear. Yeah, it is a tephril cactus, but it's um, yeah. closely related to Opuntias, and you can blast those. And yeah. They're not a real fast, great grower, but mm -hmm. they're very interesting. Very cool, very unusual plant. Beautiful bloom, big white flowers, yeah, yeah. very lovely, and, um, I, and and easy to propagate as well. You can yeah. just break one of these off you and could, pop it in the ground. You could do it right now. They they're almost fall off. Okay. <laughs> now, we want to give equal time to our, our counterpoint plants, and uh, we have, uh, Lindsay, a, a number of different things that you've brought along, and yes. uh, you know, d you know, that, that provide kind of softness and mm -hmm. motion as the counterbalance of uh, the uh, succulents. We have a grouping down there with verbena and mm -hmm. copper uh, canyon daisy and senna. Yes, uh, the desert cassia or senna. It's a really great, <coughs> fast-growing shrub. It'll get to be about six to eight feet, and bees absolutely love it. Yeah, they love those yellow flowers, mm -hmm. and they do. it's quite showy, I think. It is, yeah, and it's a plant that maintains its blooms for the majority of the year, so it's mm -hmm. really nice. And I think the, the purple of the verbena is a perfect counterpoint to the yellows. Yeah, they complement each other, and that one is known to attract bees, butterflies, right. birds. The, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm I love the verbenas as a as a family, but I think this purple ground hugging one is the best for mm -hmm. our area. Yeah, it does really well. It gets to be about three feet, mm -hmm. so it doesn't get to be too large. It's really just a nice mm -hmm. cover for the ground. Kind of dotted in with some other things, and mm -hmm. and Copper Canyon Daisy, of course, is is a coveted plant here locally. It does extremely well. Yeah, and the fragrance is amazing. Yeah, really great. Mm -hmm. Another a plant grouping that you brought, and these are. Probably two of my favorite all-time native plants, yes. the four-nerve daisy and yes. the blackfoot daisy. 
these are just superstars for Texas. They do so well, and I have them at my house. Mm -hmm. I actually plant them both together. I really like the four nerve daisy because mm -hmm. that bright yellow bloom, it sort of pops from the yeah. from the shorter leaves on the bottom. And, and they form such beautiful little tufts, mm -hmm. you know, so you get that kind of nice form, right. but you get the, the swaying flowers up above that, which is really yeah. nice. Yeah. It keeps a nice form, it doesn't get too messy, it no, looks great. No, 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 and, and zero care once they're established. Yeah, right? Literally absolutely. Literally zero care. Yes, I hardly take care of mine at all. All right, well, let's, let's jump back over to the succulent side for a bit and see some more counterpoint. We have over here a mangave. I brought that in because it's something that we started carrying recently. Mm -hmm. It's a cross between an agave and a manfreda. And since it's the hybrid, it's more hardy in a freeze than a traditional manfredo would be. Well, the, the form is incredible. Yes. And you can really see that agave parentage in that. Yeah, and that nice little red outline mm -hmm. along the mm -hmm. leaf tips. And then it shoots off a really nice lime green um, flower spike. Oh, cool. And in front of that, what more could you ask yeah. for? Yeah, yeah. way yeah. better. Exactly. And it also, it's neat because it doesn't do um, off, offshoot pups. Ah, okay, yeah. interesting. So it's very tidy in yes. that way. Um, Eric, there's a little agave in there. I'm glad you brought one, thank you. Yeah, I, I brought one agave. I wish I could bring 20, but Lophantha yeah. quadricolor is my favorite landscaping plant for our area. Uh -huh. um, it stays small, two by two, mm -hmm. uh, pups out readily, but the, the pups are manageable, and uh, it's the most striking variegation for a cold, hardy plant that you can have, and yeah. I always grow a ton of them. Love well, it. It, it's beautiful. So it's a, an agave lofantha, is that what you said? Yes, okay. lofantha quadricolor. The okay. regular lofantha, non-variegated, is stunning also. Yeah, yeah, and I like the blue form a whole lot, too. Sure, it's amazing, yeah. right? Yeah, know. really mm -hmm. beautiful. And you, also a bunch of different aloes as well. These, yes. And uh, a lot of these do <coughs> well year-round. Well, I would say only about 5% of the aloe world is cold-hardy in mm -hmm. our area, but mm -hmm. you, you, we do have a few, such as Ferox, Saponaria, um, Striata, mm -hmm. uh, and um, Aristata. And Saponaria is the best for flowers. You mm -hmm. just get magnificent, <laughs> surprise, bright orange flowers. Right. And it pups out wonderfully, and it's a great, strong grower. Uh, and and really a great hummingbird attractor as sure. well. Sure. You yes. know, super plant for that. Mm -hmm. Now, Lindsay, you brought another plant that I'm not familiar with at all. It's the tea tree plant. Yes, tea tree leptospermum. It's different from the traditional tea tree plant, mm -hmm. completely different species that people use to make oils out of. Mm -hmm. This tea tree plant is just one that does really well in the cold and the heat. It's been blooming all year, basically, and mm -hmm. it's our probably number one bee attractor at uh, the nursery. What? So, and um, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking desert plant or, mm -hmm. or you know, desert edge kind of uh, mm -hmm. terrains and full sun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great drainage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good drainage. At the back of a garden bed, what could be more beautiful? Yeah, it would provide a really nice shade for some of those lower growing succulents that Aaron, Eric mentioned that need some protection. Yeah. So, and the bloom time is uh, extended, right? It's, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very long bloom. Okay, well, tea tree plant, here I come. I mean, that's be <laughs> it's beautiful, number one. Unusual color, it's yeah. great. You don't see that very often. It's very unique. And uh, just a, does a, a great job at the back of a mixed bed, I would think. Mm -hmm. Next to it, and I can smell this plant from here, <laughs> uh, it's that time of year, Mexican plum. Yeah, the Mexican plum is just a great understory tree, and it produces a lot of small plums. They're kind of sour, but they're really good if you add sugar for preserves. Right, or right. Baking. People ask me about uh, the use of the fruit all the time. They can produce a lot of Absolutely, fruit. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Well, share with your neighbors, why not? <laughs> right, share with your neighbors. But again, a, a, a beautiful harbinger of spring here mm -hmm. in Central Texas and just a super tough native plant and a great one. And uh, again, it has that nice delicate look to it Absolutely. and uh, very oriental almost. Mm -hmm. So again, nice counterpoint plants. People can f find you all again. Uh, tell us the location, and uh, you're over on the east side. 801 Tillery Street. Okay. Yep. Yes. And you, it's, it's a destination that uh, uh, area gardeners really need to visit because you get the best of both worlds all in one location. So thanks so much, guys, for being it. a part of the program yeah, today. Thank you. Thank right. you. Okay, and coming up next is our friend Daphne.